Get ready for an unfiltered dose of reality straight from the streets. Introducing the Ask a Cop podcast on YouTube. Join Daryl Triplett, a seasoned 30-year vet, and Jeff Blair, a no-nonsense 14-year vet, as they dive deep into law enforcement. They're here to break down barriers and answer your burning questions. Curious? Visit askacop.live. Ask a Cop, every Thursday at 8 p.m. Subscribe now at askacop.live. It's time to Ask a Cop. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. Uh, people, welcome to another episode of the Ask a Shop Cop Show. Ask a Shop Show. Ask a Shop Show. Ask a Shop Show. Shop show. Shop show. Wilfred's already kidding. You're fine. I can second talk. <laughs> welcome to the Ask a Cop Show. My name is Daryl Triplett. My name is Jeff. My name is Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Jeff. <laughs> Who taught you that, bro? <laughs> it was off of a show, uh, 21 Jump Street, where the dude had to make up a name at the last minute. And so he, said, he was My embarrassed. Name's Jeff. He was like, My name's Jeff. I gotta show you the clip. I gotta show you the clip. My name's how, how Jeff. Have you, have, how you have not seen that clip, I have no idea. But I'm pretty sure our audience knows that, uh, uh, that, 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 where that comes from. Mm. Anyway, welcome to the Ask a Cop Show. We're here to answer all your favorite questions about law enforcement. Uh, no matter what the question is, why do cops do X, Y, Z? Why are we so good looking? Why are we so sexy? Why are uniforms why, so why no, Right. Why oh. is is triplet stomach so flat with six pack? I mean, yeah, yeah that yeah. woofer is really kicking in. <laughs> This motherfucker's stomach is never been flat. <laughs> he came out like this. <laughs> Not born 80 pounds. <laughs> yes. Motherfucker was born 80 pounds, wearing a 42 in the waist. <laughs> Y'all know I'm sexy. <laughs> uh, where you get the call and access to these type of questions, and we're going to answer them. And uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll do it sort of in a comical way. Uh, some things we'll do in a comical way. Other things we will do very straight up and down. And today is one of these subjects that is very straight up and down. Today's show is about uh, armed and dangerous, the, re the reality of police powers. Now, uh, we always start off our, our show always with, with the game and we always have fun while we're doing it and we're looking for oh, some yeah. participation. So you guys go ahead and get logged on here. Come on yeah, in. in, come on in, get settled in, get you a shot, mm -hmm. settle down, light your sticks up, folks. Pour up with us. Here you go, pour up with us. Mm. And uh, get ready to enjoy the show. Yes. Because we got a nice show lined up for you today. I think this is gonna be a really good one uh, with all the events that has been taking place in this world. Over the last two weeks, this is gonna be a really good show. I, I, I can feel it. Yeah, it is. It. It, it, yeah. it really is. Uh, so, without further reservation or hesitation, uh, first thing I'd like to do is uh, support the page. People, I, I'm gonna tell you right now, we have merch. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. We have merch, people. We have merch. Uh, go online and support the channel. This is how we support the channel uh, and how we keep things going. Thanks. Uh, Box Brand. Thank you. We're doing good. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Really We're good. doing good. Peace, brother. Peace. Appreciate you. Uh, we have a crew neck shirts. We have uh, t shirts. We have mugs. We have uh, all types of cups and stuff like that. So we have to think of some type of ways to keep the channel going because God knows uh, yes. this doesn't pay for yes, we, nothing we, right now. So we're a just full production going on here. Full production, people. Support, like I said, I mean, you know, these people are at least $200 an hour around here. And I'm telling you right now, it's, it's ridiculous. We have a special guest calling in with us today. Yeah, oh yeah. He's calling in in about 10 minutes. What time is he calling in, producer? I can't remember what time. 8.15. 8.15. We have a special guest calling in. We got 10 minutes to get to uh, our little game show. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. We should be ready for him to, to call in, him or her. I don't know who it is because he never tells me anything. They just roll out the red carpet for me 
I pull up, I walk in, they have my drink ready for I me. I mean, you think this Make guy was a, everything. Yeah, a superstar. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just he pulls up here in his little sports car yeah. and he doesn't even get attacked by birds anymore. No, the birds know now. They know now. They know who he is. Yeah, know who First time it was like, hey, who's this black guy pulled security. up here? That was security. Yeah, security, yeah, security was security. on it, baby. Was on it. Like, who's this black guy pulled up yeah, here? Was on it. Shout this suspicious looking black guy, this bird attacked him, I mean, and wouldn't stop attacking him. Yep. It was the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Some bitch laughs at me for like 30 minutes. Oh, my wife just fucking cracked up laughing. It was just, it was, it was amazing, people. Mm -hmm. I wish y'all could have been here to see it. Now that's what I wish I had a camera for right there. That's what that's what we were missing. Hey, one of these days we're gonna have like a reality part to this. That's what we should do. I'm telling you, most of the, the funniest shit that we do, y'all. It's off camera. It's off camera. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> the funniest shit that we do. What if you sit there talking about some random shit and then like something will happen and like everybody around is just dying laughing. So um it's 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 definitely a fun uh it's funny our show is meant to be uh light it's meant to be fun funny um this is our way of uh of of of, of uh giving back. what's the word giving back uh because we talk about community policing a lot Absolutely. uh in our in our agencies every agency talk about community policing a lot and i really feel like this is like a form of our form of right. community policing because we're involving you guys uh asking questions learning why we do what we do, you know, how we do what we do, um, seeing the videos that we put up, how dangerous this job can be sometimes. And it's just our way of giving back, just kind of showing, like I said. Um, I mean, and not only yeah. for us, it's for you too, because, you know, a lot of times, if you're involved in a situation, uh, a use of force situation, like we're going to uh, talk about today, armed and dangerous. Hey, Jay. Uh, hey, 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 hey uh, armed and dangerous. You know, that's for you too, because guess what? Three o'clock in the morning, you wake up and someone is standing over your bedside and you have to bust a cap on them. You need to know what to say to the police when they get there. Now, do we have to explain what busting a cap means? I Maybe think, we do. I think what, what everybody mean? knows what busting a cap is. But just in case if oh, somebody okay. don't know. Go ahead. Explain what, what, what busting a cap means. Busting a cap means. And we're not talking about sexual neither. Well. <laughs> I bust you could have camps. You could have been busting the captain. I was busting the cap when this motherfucker walked in and had to bust another cap. I was busting the I cap. I was butt ass man, you know what I mean? <laughs> Butt in the air. And I was busting the cap. And this dumbass breaks the window and comes in. I had to bust another, to bust cap. another cap. 45 caliber. Oh, God. Yeah, I did him. So this is uh, Danger to Policing, Armed and Dangerous. Give us a call, 770-727-1620. Like I said, we have to get through this here. we got a guest calling in uh, uh, here. So we'll go ahead and get started with the game here. And uh, I, let me start first because this is a good one here. Mm -hmm. I want to see how you guys are going to react to this here. Believe me, these producers sit back and they make these questions up for us. We really don't know until we're sitting down here reading them and crediting us that we could read at all. It gets rough. Here we go. Public school education at its finest. At its finest. Let's go. All right. Which one of these strange behaviors is true? No. No. Wait, wait, no, no. It, it'll be true. You have to read that one, son. Yeah, but that's that's the one that's first. Okay. Oh, well then you're well then you're going first then. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Jesus I'm gonna get, Christ. I'm gonna get fired. <laughs> We're sorry. both fired. I'm used to it. I'm sorry. I'm always getting fired in some place. <laughs> Can you guys, Which of these strange behaviors is true about Daryl? There's a lot of them, but I, I can only fit three on the paper. Right? Uh, owns a pet tarantula that he walks on a leash in the park. Has a habit of wearing tidy whities to business meetings, claiming it helps him think more creatively. Guys, I'm going to be honest. I think that one's it, but I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> and then C, Daryl enjoys eating. You know what? C. <laughs> See, <laughs> Daryl enjoys eating pickles dipped in chocolate sauce, uh, stating it's his favorite snack. Listen, if you know Daryl like I know Daryl, if it has anything to do with eating, that's it. That is it. So chime in. What do y'all think? What do y'all hey, think? Johnny, what's up, Johnny? I see you, man. Someone Thanks said C. In. Someone C? said C. <laughs> That's John. Is that Champ? Champ said C. I think I uh, Champ. I think Johnny said C too. 
Johnny says, he's, I believe it's C2. His fat ass is always eating and always trying to make other people eat with him so they be fat like him. Well, mm. Let me stop fat shaming, my friend. Why are you fat shaming me? I'm you sorry. know that I am ashamed of my weight. No, you're not. Yes, I am. You this think you this swim. hurts. This hurts people. I want you oh, to know so right you, now. So you're gonna let so I'm the bad guy now. Yeah, you're the bad guy. Because I never talk about you. What, what, what are you gonna say? I never talk about you. What are you gonna say? Look at those oh, they, look they, at those they, ugly six pack abs. Oh abs my and those god. Those beautiful Jesus biceps. Christ. Is that what so, you're gonna say? Someone help say us, it, please. Say it. Jesus Stroke Christ. Stroke my ego for me, please. Go ahead, go ahead, please. I'll, I'll tell you what it is. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Uh, okay. We got a B. We got somebody says B. Someone says Brand B. Tidy White used to business meetings because it helps him with his creativity. Wow. Um, I'll be honest, y'all. I'm 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 in between B and C. Uh, B and C. B and C. All That's right. right. Well, We're drum roll, please. Let's get a drum roll. The answer is. What is it, son? B. B. I knew it. I wear tidy whities because they're good luck for me and they keep all my shit tight and close to me when I'm in a business meeting. Because you never know when, when I when what? someone might one of those someone my, something might happen in the business meeting and I get excited, okay? And you gotta keep it tight. Right, and I gotta keep it tight to me. So I wear my tidy whities. Tidy whities. Tidy whities. I remember that that the, the joke that he's told about the tidy whities and the shit stains. That's the first thing that came to my mind. Someone Nasty called up here. Someone called up yesterday. It asked about it that. Really asked about that. <laughs> yeah. There, it was freaking unbelievable. We yeah. were in the middle of a major deal, major shooting, and we were discussing that. And he calls up and he asks that question right there. I was like, I don't know how I go back to comedy to this, to back to that, but we did it. We made it successful. If the correct answer is B, people. The correct answer, A, Desiree. Desiree said, C, like I said, I believe, I, I still believe that is an answer, but I, he said, Desiree, he said B, sweetheart, so. it's B. I like to wear, because I take care of so much business, all right, I mm -hmm. like to wear my tidy whities and I take care of business in my tidy whities I'm while I'm all snubbed all up. All the business that he takes care of is in the kitchen. He, in my tidy whities in my, in my, in my tidy whities all right? All right, so let's do Jeff now. Oh, this yeah, is going to be good. good. Here we go. Okay. Which one of these strange behaviors is true about Jeff? Let's go. Jeff practices juggling flaming torches in his backyard as a stress reliever. Okay. B, Jeff collects antique typewriters and uses them to write letters to his friends. Well, we know Jeff can't type, but go ahead. I can barely speak. All right. Uh, and C, Jeff insists on only eating foods that is blue, believing that it brings him good luck. I can see his dumb ass doing something like that. Hey, hey, everybody eating, has their superstitions. Eating only blue food so that you think it's good luck. Everybody has their superstition. So what do y'all think? What y'all think? A, B, or C? What do y'all think? A, B, or C? Come on, we got some people watching right now. Let's get some more people John in by share C. this link. John link. says C. All right, John, we got we got C. C. All right, everybody share C. this link. Everybody share this link. Everybody share this link right now. Everybody share this link. Just hit share on your on your uh, social media devices, whatever you're doing, and, and and share the link real quick. Yeah, let's get some more people up in here. People, there it is. There's that number rising. That's what I like mm. to see. Let's get it nice. Let's get it nice, people. Get it rose. Get it rose. Get it rose. Yeah. All right. Well, Someone said D. Someone says D. There D. Is no there D. is no D. Chili. <laughs> Chili, you are you drinking one for two? None of the above. <laughs> None of the above. Chili, are you drinking one for two? Uh, okay. I'll read. I'll read the ant or the the uh, uh, question to you again. A. Jeff. A. Jeff practices juggling flame, flaming torches in his backyard as a stress reliever. That's if he had a house in a backyard. B, Jeff collects antique typewriters and uses them to write letters to his friends. Jeff don't have no friends, mm -mm. okay? C, Jeff insists only on friends. eating blue food, believing that it will bring him good luck. Jeff don't have no good luck. 
Okay, that's why this is a man kids. who got fired five times in 24 hours. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you a bitch. There is no good luck. <laughs> so, which one do you guys think it is? A, B, or C? Someone said D. There is no damn D. So go back and reevaluate A, B, or C. A, B, or C. Chilly must know me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I need a real name. Type in your real name. All right. Maybe you know what? Don't type in your room. Yeah, don't do that. All right, all right. So, all right, so right, 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 right. Three. Right, yeah, man. It is C. Without li listen, everybody got their superstitions. Don't judge me. Okay? Jeff insists on eating when, food that is blue, believing that it brings them good luck. Yes. Oh, yes. God. I remember one time I put blue food color in my eggs because I was hoping for this. Like I was praying for a specific thing, right? So I'm like, hey. This is what I need. All right, cool. So I put the blue in my eggs and I eat it. It's not many blue foods. So this. let me ask you a Blueberries. question. Blueberries. When you went to the bathroom and pooped, did it come out blue or was it still brown? It was blue. That was the question of the day. It was blue. It was blue. It was that blue. food hey, color hey, to do it to you all the time. Scared the shit out of me because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I'm shitting blue. That's all my God. What kind, of, what kind of person shoots blue? Me. I'm a smurf. I'm shitting blue, people. I'm hey, out of here. Hey, that's a new thing we're going to do. We're going to start balling up our paper, throwing it at the at the people out there in La La Land. That's what we got to start doing. That, that lets us know we love you. Here you go. Your turn. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, people. Oh, shoot. We're going to go on right here now. So, okay. So, we, uh, let's see here. I believe um, I love this program. Thank you, uh, A A L A. Uh, I, I just those are just the abbreviations, uh, but you know who I'm talking to. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. sir. Yes, sir. All right, on to the next slide. There. Okay, eight fifteen. Uh, okay, do we have our person in the queue yet? I see two people in the queue. No, not yet. Okay. All right. All right, that's okay. So we'll, when he calls in, we'll just let him right in here. Okay, so uh, people is, today, is black? because yeah, he, you know he's, he's on him. he's on MP time, CP time, <laughs> or CP time. He's on one of those time zones. Call uh, in. Sponsor break. Yeah, sponsor break. All right, go ahead. Go right ahead. We'll go ahead with our sponsors. We've got to give it up to our sponsors, Mr. Uh, Tom and Pools at 89 93 Tara Boulevard, Jonesboro, Georgia, 770. Uh, 478 2257. Big sponsor of the show. Mm -hmm. Great guy, good friend of mine. And when I tell you, hats off to him. Salute to Ed Talman. All your Tom pool Pose. needs. All your pool needs. Call and, and not only do they install the pool, they actually make the pool awesome. They make it from scratch. Scratch. Fi fiber. Like, like, like biscuits. Like every like mama in, in the kitchen, in the kitchen. whipping See? up the batter, yes. all that other good stuff. They're making those pools and they're breaking them out right there. They deliver them. They got the big old trucks to deliver all that other good stuff. Mm. Tallman Pools, ladies and gentlemen, if you want, like and share this link. All right, we're up to 403 views. Come on, people. Let's push it. Let's push it. Everybody share the link. Everybody share the link. Let's get it up. We should be at a thousand right now. We should be at a thousand and something right it's, now. It's coming. it's coming. Nice and slow, but uh, you know, I'm not even going there with you. I'm not even going there with you. Uh, we have an interesting show tonight. Like I said, the show's about something very serious, armed and dangerous, uh, the reality of policing powers. What powers do we have as police officers? Uh, and uh, uh, what does the law say that we can do and that what we can't do up to 709 people? Come on, people, bring it on in here. Bring it on here here with your boys. Um, everybody share the link. The law, and we're going to talk about the state of Georgia. Now, I will tell you this here. I am not an attorney. Neither am I. We know that I'm much. barely. Right. Barely a cop. I'm barely a cop. <laughs> uh, I'm in there. Guys. Right. Uh, so we're not, we are, we're not police officers. There you go, that Wolford again. We are not attorneys. But what we can tell you, what we do specialize is in the law mm -hmm. as far as applying the law, what the law says. I've got over 30 years police experience. Jeff's got over 15 years. 
policing experience? Uh, 12. 12 years policing mm -hmm. experience. Uh, so he's the baby goat. I'm the old goat here. The old goat. All right. And I can tell you right now, this is some good stuff because you never think you're going to need this stuff until and something so happens and yeah. you have to use force on someone. And then you're going to be going back to ask a cop dot live looking at this video and say, saying, what the hell did what the hell did Jeff and Daryl say exactly I should be saying say. right now? Yes. Okay, say what now? I should say what? Right. So listen up, pay attention, share this with your friends because you don't know who's going to need it. Yes. All right. Yes, yes. Uh, so the next um, the next video that we have is something that happened here last week that really freaking disgusted me. Oh yeah. And it disgusts a lot of America, Americans. It's, it was, it was, I mean, when I seen this, I, I was just thinking, I was like, what the fuck are we back in 1960? Are you fucking kidding me? I don't know what I, I mean, was thinking. Just, it's just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. You guys like them and, and, and support the channel. Hit that QR code up there if you can. Um, and, and well, like what? and support the, the channel on there. What was that now? What are the, all I see is Coochie. One of the, <laughs> one of the viewers says, Jeff looks like he. Wait, wait, wait I can't hold see on. It. Wait, 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 what, what is this here? Why is that blocking that? Uh, hold on a second. Know. Let me get it down. Hold on. I can get it down. Hold on. Jeff looks like he what? I just saw Coochie. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. Jeff looks like he okay. knocked people out for Coochie. <laughs> <laughs> this country. This country. <laughs> probably 20 million people. Okay. And you know that's a little bit old. That chart. That chart's a couple of months old. And out, uh, if you uh, want to, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see here. Okay, go ahead with the thing. Let's see here. I really see something that said. Take a look at what happened. Oh. Sorry, people. I'm sorry, I got it. Let me get my shoes. Hold that in your head. It's bloody. So we got to move to the class. Watch out. I'm watching this. I'm watching this and I'm saying, I cannot believe this is happening. I cannot yeah, believe that this surreal. is happening. Surreal. I mean, I'm watching this and I'm going, what bastard will try to kill someone over a damn job? You know, thank you, Smith. We love, we love, we love, we love the show too. We love having you guys on as listeners. Everybody share the link. Everybody share this link right now. Everybody share this to your family and friends right now. You know, make this the, go viral. The biggest thing about this video for me, um, first of all, the, the, the fact that it happened. And I know there was a lot of controversy behind this because people were thinking that, you know, this was a uh, uh, this was fake. Somebody mm -hmm. set this shit up. Somebody they did. Now, I know when I first watched it, and we're just being in law enforcement, all my SWAT guys, you'll understand exactly what I'm about to say. Is that number one? Um, you know, for, okay, these guys are coming in at the very end, but number one, for me, if, if there's a shooting, mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot more movement. These, these people are still in the stands eating hot dogs and popcorn. 
I mean, look at my man right here with his head. <laughs> Nobody moves. He's white people for you, son. <laughs> hey, hey bullets, bullets are flying <laughs> and, 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 and nobody's moving. What the hell is going on? If that, a, if that was a stadium full of black people, I'll tell you right black now, it would have been cleared out. the fuck out. We don't want to know shit. give a damn. We we're not getting, getting shot. We ain't no. getting, nope, 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 We nope, hope nope. he's okay, but we are right, out. Right, right. Good luck. But on a more serious note, um, I, I don't. I don't believe this was fake. I, I really. It don't. was not fake. Um, the, the 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 fact that somebody, that anybody, could take a shot at not not just a person, but this is a, a former Born president, president, possible future president, mm-hmm. and you think it's okay to take a shot at this person because of political beliefs, and that's that's just just this is not okay. Well, what was crazy about it was that's the, that's a, a Republican rally, and the kid who shot at him, 20 year old kid. The first thing I thought of when I heard the kid was 20 years old, I was like, what the fuck do you have to be upset about? What are you what 20 are you? years old, for God's sake, living at home with your mom and dad. What the fuck do you got to kill anyone probably, for, for God's probably sake? Has, has, clearly has never had any pussy. Yeah, probably, because yeah. why are you shooting at somebody over a political view? Son, go get you a girlfriend. I, the first thing I thought, I was like, what are we back in the fucking 60s for hmm. God's sakes? What the hell is going on? The thing that someone will take someone's life over a job. Yes, now, Michael. So Michael said, yes, I thought we heard that there was people injured on the scene. And there was. There was two people died. There was. A, uh, no, a, no. A, one a person died. Chief. One was, person died. No, it was, it was two. No. Well, I heard sir. two. I heard it was a fire chief. And then there was this, this other guy. He was a weird looking fellow, but he hmm. took a bullet. No, no. One person one. died. Two but were the critically. Fire chief. No, one person died. And two were uh, critically injured, mm-hmm. but they made it. Okay, Thank but God. they made it. Thank, Thank God. God. Thank but God. one person did die, and he was a a reserve firefighter. Mm-hmm. And this dude died diving on his family, trying to protect his family, and got shot in the freaking sure. head by this idiot. Damn. So you know, people, the struggle is real out there, and God bless America. That's all I got to say. But we. Are better than this. All right. Whatever problem this cat had with anybody, what was crazy was was that he was a registered Republican at a Republican rally, but he gave fifteen dollars to the Democratic Party and then starts shooting, and then goes to a Republican Party and starts shooting them. And then today I heard that when they dumped his phone because. You shoot a former uh, president of the United States, we're going to dump your phone. We're going to turn your life all upside down, inside out. That you could believe. We're going to dig all up in your business. All right. That's all right. You try to assassinate one of our fucking presidents. Yes. We're going to we're going to dole the yeah, American people is dove into Mom, your dad, life. Everybody. Everybody's business. You don't have no personal business no more. I don't even know, you know, I, I, I get it with the whole gun thing and stuff like that. But this kid clearly had some type of mental problem that he was dealing with. And had to be. And and, and, and there was people in the crowd that was like, yo, there's somebody on the roof. There, this guy is on the roof. So whether it's local law enforcement, but, you know, but there was another thing that really bothered me about this whole situation was that. You know, they said Secret Service get there days before. Mm-hmm. Canvas off everything. Hey, this is where we're gonna be. We're gonna be. That should have been a Secret Service member on that roof. Mm. They asked that. So, do, so, do you know what the head Secret Service agent said? The the the, the, per, the lady that's over Secret Service. Please, please uh, enlighten you. Please. She enlighten. said that the slope of the roof get was the too steep. Get the fuck out of here. And that it would have been dangerous to put personnel on that slope. That's, but, a, uh, that's a bullshit excuse. It is a bullshit. There should excuse. have been that 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 roof was. They said it was 147 yards away, and when I heard that the shot he missed the shot, mm-hmm. I knew it was an amateur shooter because mm-hmm. ain't no way in hell a real shooter gonna miss a shot 147 yards with a long with a, with a long gun with rifle. With a long gun rifle. So I knew you was you was a bitch then, so right. and you missed that shot. But I'm glad you missed it. But no, a Secret Service member. Or a member of that local police agency should have been on that roof at that time. What do you think about his dad, who 
All right, we're up to 2,233 views. Everyone share, please. Share, share, share the link. We're going to take that view thing away from you. Yeah, no, I like that view thing. Yeah, that. Yes. Uh, on top of what, what do you think about the mm -hmm. father who bought the rifle for him? Because they traced the rifle back to the father, and the father actually bought the rifle for his son. Okay, well, see, that's so that's something that is not abnormal. Like, like me and my son, we hunt. Mm -hmm. Right, and I bought my son a rifle, but now I kept. What it. kind of rifle? It was a, a, a two seventy. I kept it, but when we went hunting, it wasn't an assault rifle. It wasn't an assault rifle, but but still, even to this day, okay. Well, let's say for instance, I bought my son a rifle today, and then I don't know his girlfriend breaks up with him, and he he goes off shooting people. Which once again, we, we don't we don't do that, right? But I'm just saying the fact that his dad bought it for him. He's twenty. Is it still a problem? Yes, because it was it was an air platform, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, weapon, which yep. means he was twenty, he was not old enough to have that weapon. So yes, that's, so that oh, someone just said that's Pennsylvania law, so it's legal there. Apparently, it's legal in Pennsylvania. So so talk to me about that. That's Pennsylvania law. What's Pennsylvania law? Yeah, enlighten us more about that because I'd like to know that because mm -hmm. we we're Georgia boys and Ohio boy, so. Um, uh, so maybe Pennsylvania has a different law. So I'm not even saying that it's Pop's fault. I'm not saying that. Even though it's a freaking horrendous uh, uh, a thing that happened, it's not Dad's fault because he drove over 50 miles to this rally, by the way. Yeah. Baron, so, Baron Malcolm, Malcolm, I see you. I see hey, you. Malcolm. It. Yes, sir. What's up? Uh, so, so he drove over 50 miles away. To, to do this horrendous act. Mm -hmm. So mom and dad had no freaking clue what this kid's doing. At least so far, there's no evidence of that, uh, that they had any idea what this kid was doing uh, or that they took part on it or aided them bed in, in any type of way. Yeah. So I want to be very, very clear when I say that. N nothing with that. But still, at some point in time, when you're buying your children these weapons, you got to know as a parent, every parent know their child. All right. Stunner 698 uh, six, says, also legal in Georgia for long guns. So clearly uh, they have changed that. Yeah. And uh, 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 Turner, you're supposed to, you, you got the link on your email. So if you hear us, hit your email up. Hit your email up. We're waiting on you. Oh, I thought it was Stunner. It's, it's Turner. My yeah. He, he, he's, he's retarded. He can't. Can't spell. Jesus Apparently. Christ. Call in, okay. son. You still uh, waiting on your late ass to call in. Right. You're 30 minutes, you're 15 minutes late. We're professionals around here. Yes. Got so, you. so no, I'm not blaming mom or dad. They're cooperating with the law enforcement officers. They're doing all that other good stuff that they're supposed to be doing. So you can't be, you can't necessarily be mad at them, even though it's a horrendous thing. And thank God he missed. Listen, oh, thank God he missed. I, I'm not, I'm this has no nothing to do with whether you're Republican or Democrat. This has got to do about the American way and what we believe in our democracy. Yeah, because you still can't okay. shoot at a motherfucker because you don't believe what he believes. Could you imagine if we lived in a world like that where, hey, you don't believe what I believe, so pow, bitch, you dead. No, we, we can't live like that. We'll be barbarics. And that's why we have laws. That's what that's we look we like right now. Exactly. So we just can't live like that. And so I don't agree with that. Now, once again, um, if y'all tuned into politics on policing, uh, you would know that uh, um, um, go ahead, see, thank you, appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm a Trump supporter and, and I'm not ashamed of that. Um, you know, we could go into it. We could talk about it all day. We could have a part two of politics and policing. Uh, but the fact of the matter is you just can't shoot at motherfuckers because you don't, you don't believe, agree with their political you views. Agree, yeah, you can't, you just can't do it. You just can't do it. If that's the case, then what separates us from the, the criminal on the street. What separates us from that case? We can just go out and just do whatever the hell we want to do then. Yeah, and, and so, that's not the case. Yeah, that's, that's not why, the case. That's why we're here. Because people, there are people who think they can do whatever they want to do. And then that's, but that's why we're here. That's why we do our job. Uh, because you, you just, we just can't do it. Uh, okay, so the, um, <clears throat> so what I want to do is sort of leading into, I, I had to show attempted assassination on the uh, 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 presidential candidate, Donald Trump. Joe Biden did respond in kind. And once they woke him up from his nap, I'm sure. 
Joe, Joe, wake up, wake up, Joe, Joe, wake up. Lilies are, lilies are yellow. Scooby-Doo was said, yeah, right. To the cracker, and I ate it after I dipped it in my soup. That's what Joe Biden said. Joe was like, what, where are we, where are we, what's going on? Donald who? Donald who? Who's Donald? Donald Duck, Donald Duck, Scott Cat. I love Duck. I love Donald Duck. Why would they shoot Donald Duck? Jesus yeah. Christ. So that's, after they woke, woke Joe up, uh, Joe did call Trump and make sure he was all right, which I thought was a very decent thing to do. And, uh, uh, and, and, and he offered him his condolences and that him and his wife's tramp for him and all that yeah. good stuff. So here's one for Joe, I guess. That's old Joe. Yep. Just go ahead and tap out, Joe, please. Mm -hmm. So what I thought was very fitting for this was... When we're when we're addressing now, this is where it gets real, people. Okay, this is where it gets real. Two thousand two hundred twenty-two viewers. All right, people, let's get it up. Everyone, share the link. Um, everyone, support the channel. Everyone, support the channel. It's very important. This is how we uh, keep this channel going. So please. Bro, what? Jesus, help us all. <laughs> Like that was like the button, you know, like yeah, the button. And hit hey, the button and hey, like uh, the sound effect. I, I would that like to do this sound effect. Listen, I think we should do a five second, you know what? Three, God damn two, you. one. Uh, hit it. Oh, hell for you, son. <laughs> no, no, go ahead and support the channel. <laughs> go ahead and support the channel, please. Um, so what is fitting is um, we want to delve a lot into when you have to take someone's life, it is a very, uh, it is a very serious subject of, um, it is a very serious subject, I'll let you take the first slide, son, it is a very serious subject, and Jeff is going to talk about what Georgia law requires of us when you you have law enforcement now this what we're going to talk about is law enforcement and then we're going to break down for you guys as civilians so on a lot of the stuff that we have first coming up is not going to really apply to you guys it's going to apply to police so this is what we're taught this is how we're trained and stuff like that um someone said smile <laughs> everybody's talking about me i'm sorry i don't know what they told me that last time i guess i'm not smiling enough but if i look like that i wouldn't smile too much neither <laughs> All right, so Georgia, Georgia law, Georgia um, law. So armed and dangerous. The reality. Here, I need you to hold that for a second. There, I need to, this for a second. Go uh, ahead. Officers' presence, mm -hmm. verbal commands, physical control, less lethal force, lethal force. Those are the levels. Now explain to them which ones. Now, what do you mean? Which ones? Okay. So, so. As far as the first thing that we're taught in the use of force continuum, I keep forgetting he's not. Oh, that's yeah. Okay, okay. See. All right. The first thing that we're taught in the use of force continuum, go on to bring up the slides. The first thing that we're taught in as police officers in our use of force continuum is um, this here. The first thing that you have is officers present. Mm -hmm. In other words, how you look when that you should get be on the scene. That's right. For you to stop whatever the fuck you're doing is officer's presence. Hey, we're here. Put the bullshit to the side. That's right. Okay. Okay. Put the bullshit to the side. It just got real. The popo's here. All right. And 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 we need to we need to get it together. So how you look, how you dress, how you talk is going to be all of importance here. Yes. Okay. It's going to all be of importance. Because this is what people are going to relate to you by. All right. If you're dressed like a slob pulling up somewhere, then people are not going to take you serious. Yeah. All right. They won't. Uh, if you if you look like you just got out of bed, you didn't iron your clothes, all that stuff, people aren't going Chicken to take you serious. On your right. Damn body cam and that's all right. That shit. Yeah, no. Nah. Right. People aren't going to take you serious. All right. Now, the second thing is verbal command. All right, how you project your voice, yeah. how you talk to people. How hey, you stop that shit. Like Put that. her down. Hey, no, don't. God damn it. That, 
Verbal commands. Verbal commands. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I was okay. projecting. That was really good, Jeff. That's really good. Ooh, my boy, did you hear? Come yeah, on. I wish I you were here. Stay with your chest. Hey, hey, hey. Get your ass. Got. What am I telling you? My name is Jeff. Put it down. Shut <laughs> up. That's going to be your new voice from now on. Oh, boy. It's not a good look. I don't know what that means, but hey, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, that's not a good look for the United States of America to have yes, to yes. assassinate our... Yes, yes. the road right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. If you uh, that taser will get it. Okay. Um, physical control. Physical tr control is actually that officer reaching out and touching you, grabbing you. Hey, move here. Hey, stop that. Hey, take your hands out your pocket. Hey, do this, do that. Actual some type of physical touch and control. Less lethal force would be what we talked about last week. If you followed the show, who are you shouting at? I don't know. Am I shouting? I'm oh, sorry. Oh, oh, nobody. I was just, I was just uh, reiterating. Um, oh, uh, uh, verbal commands. I'm sorry. I'm not shouting at anybody. There's nobody here. Just, just jumping. Anybody? Everybody's no. safe. Right. Everybody's safe. Who's here. safe? He, everybody's safe. We're not young. He, if you don't get this volume fixed, you may not be safe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so less than lethal force. We talked about that last week's show. If you remember, we talked about the use of taser, OC, um, uh, stun grenades, uh, batons, stuff like that. So as you can see, we're not just making this shit up as we go. This is shit that the state of Georgia actually really teaches us to, to do. So you got your officer presence, your verbal command, your physical control, your less than lethal, which is all this shit around our back belt. And then finally, if all that fails, then you go to lethal force. Now, do we have to go one, two, three, four, five to get the lethal force? No. Uh, no. No. We do not. No. Because if we if we pull up to the scene and you got a gun, oh, you can X out about three, four, five of these things. We're going right we're going to lethal. Straight to five. Right. Straight so, to five. So there is no, there is no one, two, three, four, five that you have to but do. But there's still a verbal command. Mm -hmm. When we get out, there's a gun involved. Hey, drop the gun. Police, drop the gun. When it's feasible. And then if we have to go to five, we go to five. If they drop the gun, they drop the gun. And um, But that's it. Yeah, when it's feasible. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't want to hear you say, oh, well, the officer didn't tell him to drop the gun. Well, that fucker knows he ain't supposed to have a gun, and let alone shooting at people. Yeah. And so, yeah, out, it is two, nice to say drop holes the gun. And our front windshield, then, yeah, we're not. Those verbal commands are out the window. Right. It's nice to tell them to drop the gun, but it's, it's not the law that we have to before we say that. Okay. So the, that is the use of force continuum here. All right. Okay. So the next one is, now this is where I want you guys to really pay attention at. All right. 22,731 people. Everybody share this link. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get the three. Let's get the three. Let's get the three. Come on, people. Let's get the three. All right. You so like my sound effect? This, I love your sound effect. This is not my sound effect. Every time I do it, he's like laughing. It's really retarded. It is, but, you know, here we are. All right. So this is where I want to get serious for just a second because this is what's going to save you from going to prison, going to jail. Hey, Canada! This is what I'm talking about. All right. Canada, share it with your family and friends, bro. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so yeah, much. One yeah, person yeah. is one person Thanks is for the link. QR code. It really helps our channel grow. And that was from our producer. Thank yes. you so much. One person scanned the QR code. Come oh, on, guys. I did. Thank yeah, you. thank you so much. Someone, yeah, someone I didn't know I did that. That was yeah. pretty cool. Well, you know, I see yeah, no, I'm doing all this shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. someone someone buy some merch on there. Ain't nothing on there over forty dollars, so relax. Mm -hmm. You guys spend that at the strip club, so I don't want to hear it. Support the channel. Call Four in bucks. 770 1620 770 uh 727 1620. Thank you again for our sponsor, uh Tom and Pools. Thank you so much for sponsoring the show. Uh, you're a big sponsor of the show. Thank you, Ed. Yes. All right, so now let's get into Georgia law. Now, laws vary state to state, but most of the time they're similar. Very similar. If you stay on this track and if you follow the law. Mm -hmm. You pretty much don't have anything to worry about most of the time. Most, yeah. yeah. Now, you can't go doing your own goddamn the thing. The segment, hold on. The segment before the last segment on use of force 
was what happens when politics get involved in law enforcement. Yes. So we've seen with the Rashawn Brooks situation, who his nephew just got killed the other day, yesterday. Mm. His nephew, nephew just got shot and killed, I've seen on the news. Um, Damn. Uh, but he followed the law. That officer followed the law to the letter of the law and yep. still got sent to jail. Because politics, because politics reared got their head into our shit. That's right. And did not take their time. That's GBI, right. GBI, I remember, I, I remember at that time, GBI stood up and said, like, listen, we're not even finished with our investigation. We're not even finished. This is not us. We did not arrest that officer. So that showed you right then how politics can play a key role and um, and putting their heads in our job thinking they know better. So what I want to do now, this is very important because you are going to need this if you are ever involved in a use of force situation, whether you're at home chilling and someone kicks in your front door or whether you're the police out there or whether you're a security guard out there just doing your job and some fool comes in and all this other good stuff and, and you have to act. All right. So here's what Georgia law says. Now, what does it say? We're going to talk about the criminal section so the criminal section of georgia law for use of force in defense of another then we're going to talk about use of force in defense of your home then we're going to talk about use of force uh defense of property and uh, other than habitation and then we're going to talk about arrest with force mm -hmm. all right so that goes if i go to arrest you and you start resisting try to take my gun or you produce a gun or pick up a sledgehammer or something like that then yeah. there we go so we spent a lot of time researching this stuff and putting this all together for you guys so believe me when i tell you that's why i say support the channel support the channel people please all right so let's talk about 16-3-21 use of force in defense of self or others that means i can use deadly force if you are trying to cause seriously grave bodily harm for me or a third person Okay, I walk around a corner and you're about to shoot such and such, then that will be a defense of a third person. So it says justification for the use of force when a person, person reasonably believed that such force is necessary to defend themselves or others against another person's immediate use of unlawful force. The key word there is unlawful, unlawful force. force. All right. So that gives me the authority to use use of force. Conditions under which use of, uh, use of deadly force is justified. Okay, now you got OCGA 16.3.23, use of force in defense of habitation, your home. Your home. You're at home, someone kicks in your door. Oh, you know, shit. Out early. If right. You're busting a cat, and you got to bust a cat. This is, this is it. This is it. All right, 16.3.23. Use of force in defense of your habitation, your home. Justification for the use of force in defense of one's house. Conditions under which the use of force is justified to prevent or terminate unlawful entry or attack on a habitation. Now, let me very clearly explain this. Someone's banging at my door. And they say they're going to break in. Can I just shoot through the door? No. 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 That's not what that means. Not shoot through the if, door. if someone um, is, is out there smashing your car windows, can I shoot and kill them? No. That's not what this means. Okay? And we're going to get into the three components mm -hmm. that you have to have in these slides in order to be justified. This is just what the law says. And then I'm going to tell you what you have to have to be, I love you guys too, thank you, uh, to be justified in using deadly force, all right? 16.324, use of force in, in defense of property other than habitation. Justification for the use of deadly force to prevent trespass of criminal interference with property other than habitation. So is that like a like a vehicle? Uh, yes, that could be a vehicle. That could be vehicle. trespassing. Yeah. Uh, that could be a number just, of just, just multitude of things. Just right, right. Someone's on your land. Can you just shoot and kill them? No. no. 
They cannot just shoot and kill them. And I, this is going to all come together, people. I'm going to explain to you how this all is coming together. Trust me. I'm going to explain to you. So you cannot shoot just because someone's on your property. You cannot shoot just because someone is banging at your door recklessly or anything like that or busting out your car windows and stuff like that. There are three things that you have to have with that in order to be able to pull the trigger. OCGA 17420 is what gives us as police officer the power to arrest and use force. Law enforcement officers, authority to use force in making an arrest, justification for the use of deadly force by peace officers during the apprehension of a suspect. That was what protects us. 17420 protects us from that. Okay? Now, let's get into the, elements. the key elements of use of force. So, uh, do you want to take key elements or no? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll take my time. All, right. All right. So, those key elements are ability, opportunity, and jeopardy. So, uh, all the viewers, like, what does that mean to you? So, opportunity. Ability, excuse me, opportunity in jeopardy, right? So we have, you know, uh, to justify use of force, particularly deadly force, the following three elements must be present. It says must. must it says must. That means present. it has to be has all to be three. Present. Not must. two, not one, all, all three. three. All must. Right. So ahead. the ability, the aggressor must have the ability to cause harm. This means they have the means and the capability of inflicting serious bodily harm or death. Example, the possession of a weapon, superior force or strength, or the means to cause harm. So that's big. So, so what that means is, we gave an example earlier about how um, we pull up on the scene and there, there's guns out, guns are out, right? So we have to skip a bunch of numbers. And so what do we do at that point? That person at that point, has all three. That's right. If we pull up to a scene of a crime and guns are out. He has ability. He has the ability because uh, he has a gun. He has the opportunity to shoot at us and others. Mm -hmm. And everybody life is in jeopardy at that point. If there's other people on the scene and us at that particular time. That's right. Right. Um, then when we talk about physical strength, superior physical strength, we get to a scene. How many times have we got to a scene of, let's say, domestic violence? Mm -hmm. Uh, the woman is five foot five. This motherfucker is six foot, two hundred eighty pounds. She what has no chance. What five foot five? No. This motherfucker is five foot this way and five foot that way. Both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, so so that's what we talk about with physical strength. That means when you know somebody has the upper hand over you because of their size, right. their strength, etc. Opportunity. Opportunity. The aggressor must have the opportunity to use the ability to cause harm. This means they are in a position where they can immediately inflict harm. Example, proximity to the victim or barriers for this preventing an attack. So the ability that they had, we just talked about, they have the opportunity to use that gun, their strength, uh, whatever other things that they have over you at that time. And then Jeopardy, immensely, it says... Hold on, I'm going to go back to the opportunity a second. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So when you're talking about opportunity, you're talking about proximity to the victor, victim, no barriers preventing the attack. So if they got a stick, and your ass is 50 yards away from each other, That's there's no opportunity. There's no opportunity. Too no. far away, even too he, far away. Even if he threw the fucking stick. Right. Too far away. Yes, you're 50 yards right. away. And now you we're, shot him? We're talking about, oh. let's say, what I, what I love to use with opportunity is a knife. Now, mm -hmm. people say, oh, someone has a knife, you tase them. Someone has a knife, you use your ass baton. Someone use your knife, you can pepper spray them. Well, what happens if all that non-lethal force fails? Mm -hmm. Then use one stabbed up mother lover, and you're going to probably die, especially in the hands of a trained knife attacker. So, when you're talking about the proximity to the victim, no barriers to prevent the attack, 
So let's say someone has a knife and they're less than 20 feet away from me. Yeah. Okay. It, studies have been shown that it takes approximately 20 to 22 feet before you can effectively draw your weapon and fire and stop a threat uh, before you are stabbed. But which weapon? The gun or let's leave? A, a weapon. Yeah. Someone has a knife with me. They're not getting no taser, no mace, no OC, no. no uh, they're straight, they're straight to glockatizing. Glockatizing. That's it, baby. Glockatizing. Did you just make that up? No. That's a that's a that's a that's a that's a word in the urban dictionary. It has to be pronoun has verbs. Feels good. Glockatize. I'm a glockatize you. All right. In other words, you're gonna get that Glock point at you. All right. So if it's a knife, I'm still stuck on glockatize. Hey, it's it's a it's a real thing. It's my friend. Glockatize. If if you are more than so, studies have shown twenty to twenty two feet away before I can effectively draw my firearm and put two in a center mask before you're neutralized. If you die as a result of that, that is two types of problems. My problem and your problem, right? So don't put us in that situation. When you're talking about a knife attack, knives are very, very dangerous and they've killed more officers than anything. So that's what that's talking about. So now let's say it's uh, me, the officer, and the suspect is less than 20 feet away but there's a chain link fence between us. We're in a baseball diamond or something, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so that changes the scenario a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But Janine says, if all of that spells, just punch him in the face. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like Janine. <laughs> just punch him in the face. <laughs> uh, so, okay, all right, go ahead with it. All right, so that's opportunity. But I wanted to give you a little bit of definition on when we're talking about opportunity. So if there can't be a barrier between you guys, there, there's got to be just pure and open space between you guys, and they have to be able to be able to inflict serious physical harm on you. Go ahead. All right. So Jeopardy admits Jeopardy. The threat posed by an aggressor must be imminent. The victim imminent right away. Yes, right away. The victim must be reasonably believe that they are in immense danger of being harmed. Example. Aggressive action or behavior, verbal threats or immense harm, advancing towards the victim with a weapon. So he just gave a few examples about that. Is there a chain link fence in between us? Could you imagine a motherfucker with a knife coming at a police officer and the officer decides to shoot him through a fence? That, that's not going to work. Not a good day. Or not, not necessarily for the officer, but also for a citizen. If there's a, a chain link fence in between you and he has a knife and you decide to shoot, yeah, that shit's not going to work. Like, you might as well take that manslaughter charge. That ain't going to work any day of the week. So it. we've got to know what we're doing. It has to be imminent right in front of me. You're five feet, ten feet. Like, you're right here. You know, um, that shit has to be there. Now, also, I wanted to express something to you guys also. This law is referring to you out there not just police yes citizens citizens so we talking about these statues yes not this just, shit applies directly to y'all that's business. right you have to have ability opportunity and jeopardy also yes. somebody kicks in your front door and then they decide to turn around and run the opposite direction can you shoot you them? cannot shoot them nope you cannot i'm gonna repeat hold on let me take a sip of my woofer and i'm gonna repeat it again <laughs> You cannot shoot them in the back because there is no jeopardy. There is no opportunity. Right. And at that point, there is no ability. This motherfucker is running the opposite way. Now, do you want to shoot him? Probably. Of course, I would want to shoot that motherfucker too. Because you kicked in my door. That's right. But you can't. You got to have self-control just like we have self-control. The same way when bullshit goes south with police officers, and y'all would hold us to the fire. You held. Uh, you are held to the fire too. Absolutely. You cannot shoot an individual where their back is turned away from you. Period. All right. So what we're going to do here on the next slide is, there you go. Uh, we're going to apply the elements. Now, this is what I like about the research that we've done because we're going to really do. do uh, uh, oh, thank you. We we wet. <laughs> 
What? You are doing great. Hey, but what if it's a man? Uh oh. I'm Jim. No, he is Daryl. I'm Jim. The happy one was Daryl. My number is. You bet not. Our number is. 911-727-1620. Call in, we win. Okay. Hey, boys. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Okay, all right, let's keep it going here. Next slide. Okay, applying the elements. Now, this is what I love about Georgia Law. It's really going to drill down here. So we're going to get through this really quick here. So we got a couple more slides to go here. Uh, how are we looking on time, producer? Okay, one hour in. Okay, good, good. We're we trying to good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. So we got a little bit. So that, that's good. Uh, okay. So applying the elements now, the ability, the suspect must possess the means to inflict serious physical harm. For example, if a suspect has a knife, they have the ability to cause significant injury or death. That's the ability. The suspect must possess the means, knife, gun, rock, stick, ashtray. Rock, paper, scissors. Right, rock, rock, paper, scissors. Okay, he must have the ability to do it. So, if you shoot this guy and claim ability, and this motherfucker don't have no arms, you're in trouble. 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 You're in trouble. Trouble. Right? Because they're gonna say, "What's the ability? How do you have the ability? What do you have? Was it gonna headbutt you? Maybe he could have. Well, but will it cause serious physical harm? Matter what, a root prone person believe that that would kill you? How big was his head? Well, now there, there's the question right there. There you got it right there. That's How the question. How big is that head? Yana, that motherfucker. Now he had a huge head, sir. It was the size of a goddamn cinder block. <laughs> he was, he was head butting officers. He was just knocking officers out. Knocking knock the motherfuckers out left and right. He had that one Pow. arm. <laughs> he didn't have no arms. <laughs> Nothing. He's in a wheelchair, no legs. He's just going around knocking them out. Head butt motherfucker. Just head butting them. <laughs> then officer. Officer Smith over here shot him. <laughs> oh, Thank man. God for Officer Smith. Thank I God. Huge. You took the rap for all of us. Mm -hmm. He's at okay. jail, though. <laughs> okay. All right. Officer Smith is going to jail. Officer yeah. Smith is going yeah. to jail. Thank you for taking the rap for all of us. Hey, thank you for saving us from the head break. Baby. Opportunity. Jail. The suspect must have, or no, the suspect must be in a position to use the means inflicted uh, to inflict harm. So he has to have. Uh, be in a position to use the means to put the harm, like I said, with no arms, no legs. You, you shoot a paraplegic, I'm going to say you're screwed. I'm just going to yeah. go out on the limb and say you are screwed. You are screwed All right. All right. Um, if the suspect with the knife within close range of the officer or another person, they, they have the opportunity to cause harm. So that's what we talked about before. Okay. All right. Studies have shown 21 foot rule. 21 foot roll within 21 feet, a, a person can get to you and kill you up and stab you up with a knife, especially mm -hmm. a trained knife fighter. We don't know. We we try to look and see how they're holding the knife, if they're holding it but this shit, way, we don't, we don't if they're holding if they're it trained, this way. But that shit, you don't know. Matter. Right. But it doesn't. We don't know if they're trained. If they're really trained, they would throw that motherfucker. Right. But if they if they threw a knife at me, then we can articulate, yes, this is why I put uh, 37 rounds on him out of my 45 and it's on me. Why? Because he threw a knife at me. Why did you stop at 37? So we didn't have more. <laughs> okay, Jeopardy. Uh, Jeopardy is one the thing I want show? you to think of. The game show Jeopardy? No, not the game show Jeopardy. Oh, shit. Is what I, what, I, what, when, what I want you to think of with Jeopardy is right away. Right, right away. now. Right not tomorrow. Face. Not what people are thinking. Not what the, 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 the prosecuting attorney or the defense attorney is going to say. Six months from now, right now, at right the second now. that you're breathing, right now, you have to be in jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm going to read it to you. The officer or other person, because you can shoot in defense of a third person, remember? You can shoot in defense of a third person, must be in immediate danger. So, clear cut case of this one is boyfriend. You break up with boyfriend, he's banging on your door. Bam, 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 bam. You open the door and he gets in your face and he goes, bitch, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he walks away. 
and he goes to his car and he drives home, right? And then you get in your car because he said he's going to kill you. Well, uh, Daryl and Jeff said ability, opportunity, and jeopardy. Hell no. So I'm going <laughs> to. You know, jeopardy there. That motherfucker's gone. So Jeff I'm going to drive to his house and kill him first. And I'm going to kill him first. Bitch, you're going to prison. You are going to jail. I'm going to call the five second. Full of shit. Bing, 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 or you left and followed after him, all that other stuff. If the suspect is advancing toward the officer or person with the knife in a threatening manner, the officer can have reasonably perceived an immediate threat. Yes, that's just immediate. Now it says weapon. What's a weapon? What's a weapon? What's a weapon? A weapon could be anything you deem necessary that could cause you physical bodily harm. A glass bottle of Coca-Cola. Is that a weapon? Could be. Is it a weapon? It a glass? Be. And you said the key word, a glass a bottle. A glass bottle of Would a plastic bottle of Coca-Cola be a weapon? No. Absolutely I'm gonna, not. I'm going to taste his ass, and I'm going to send his ass to jail. A glass bottle? Mm, son, that, that's a lot of bodily harm. Got that time for anybody. Right. A regular citizen, uh, right. like me or you. Uh, yeah. All right. A suspect is armed with a knife. That's the ability. Paint the picture. Armed with a knife. Mm hmm. Armed okay. with a knife. All right. Is mm -hmm. within a few feet of an officer. A few fucking feet. Or a civilian. He's right there. That's the opportunity. Yes. Can y'all, I'm painting the picture. Y'all see it? Do you motherfuckers? And see it? is making aggressive movements or threats. That's Jeopardy. What is he saying? What threats? I'm going to fucking gonna kill fuck you. you up. I'm going to fuck you Most up. I'm going to fucking meth. kill you on meth. He don't got no fucking front teeth. No teeth. He stinks. He's, He's sweating all over the place. And, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. This this is a real picture, y'all. Like, this this shit we do on a daily basis. In this situation, we do. the officer may be justified in using force, including deadly force, to neutralize the threat. Now, notice the state of Georgia says may. Because we have other tools. Because we have other tools that, we could that could possibly prevent that. But a regular citizen wouldn't have that. that. So, nor uh, the training. Nor the training. So, if you had a gun, if a regular citizen had a gun and somebody pulled a knife on you and you shot him, you're justified. You have to be able to articulate ability, opportunity, jeopardy. Mm hmm. Don't say, don't get on there. But and that's one of them. But that scenario, say, there is all, all the elements. All, are there. all the three elements are there. I just all gave them there. to you. All of them are there. So if you decide to pull your gun and you shut that person, you got to stop them. You're you good know, to I go. Got my, I got my kids with me. This motherfucker came up on a knife on Do me. Do you like the kids? Because uh, well, two, 50, of them, like, two of them. Okay, two of them. Okay, I got you. My favorite's in the front seat. He was sick. Right. right. So you, you have to defend them. So you still got to defend them all. All right. Got you. But as officers, could we still make that same choice? We have other tools that we can use. Like for me, for instance, any other officers out there listening? For me, somebody pull a knife on me, I'm going to tase them first. I will use my taser first. If my taser deploys perfectly and, and, and disables <laughs> him, then that's it. Win-win. This young man, on the other hand, um, he's going to straight clean his wood. Damn right. Because I'm not going to depend on a taser when it's a use of deadly force situation, and that motherfucker may work. All or may depends not work. on how close he is. We're talking shit. Our our series sevens reach up to 85 feet, effectively. 85 feet. We're talking about if this motherfucker's maybe 15, 20 feet in front of me, I'm gonna use my taser. Okay. All right. So we got Steve on now. Okay. 
All right. So, uh, come on, Steve. Now, Steve, uh, before go ahead and, and, and bring him on, please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Steve, can you hear us? Okay. So, here's can one. you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear y'all. So, okay. You can hear us. You can't link on. We can't hear Steve. We can't hear you. You cannot hear me. Hold on. We can't hear you. Hold on, Steve. Oh, let's get this. Let's let's fix this. Is your make sure your mic's unmuted? Yeah, it's unmuted. There it is. I think I hear something. You say something? Hello. There we go. Okay, I think we got you. Can you hear us? Steve? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear y'all. Let's okay. go. We can hear All right. you. So now I'm glad Steve joined us mm -hmm. because Steve is a firearms instructor uh with the state of georgia yep. he's been in law enforcement for about as long as i have been uh steve uh you guys are old well you know whatever <laughs> that's what old guys uh are. i taught steve everything he knows no, you didn't. all right <laughs> i'm sure you did okay i, 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 I taught steve you ain't taught steve, shit. steve is a wonderful instructor i <laughs> taught him everything he knows so steve is very familiar with this as far as use of force yeah really. so steve uh we're gonna I want to just pause for just a second here on the slides, and I want you to interject in the topic of armed and dangerous and the realities of police powers. And I want you to also give us your commentary on the Trump attempted assassination. Welcome to the show, Steve Turner. <laughs> 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 What's up, man? Uh, it, it's so much to unbox about the Trump assassination attempt. I mean, you got everything now from people being being quiet now because now they it, everything is kind of starting to make sense a little bit better for them. And so, so the situation. I mean, really, ask me a question because. This Trump situation is, is 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 so all over the place. Even down to yesterday, when they when they stopped and asked the uh, Secret Service uh, head, like, what the heck happened? How did you allow this to happen? It's okay, so let's, so let's go from there. So so with you being a firearm instructor, um, how did this happen? Like, in your opinion, because. If, if I said my opinion, you know, I, once again, I SWAT trained, um, that shit should have never happened. So with you being a firearm instructor, um, what are your thoughts on even the positioning? Because I told Daryl earlier that that roof that he was on, a fucking Secret Service sniper should have been on that roof. Right. So what are your thoughts? Yeah, so it's kind of like what Triplett said earlier. Um, you know, Secret Service head said that the the roof was too slanted and all this other nonsense. That That's pure nonsense. Even if the, the roof was slanted, there should be no reason why someone had the capability to access the roof. So yes. anytime we have a perimeter, you know, because I do like bodyguard work for y'all lemon turns, people, bodyguard work, but we call it executive protection. But there's no way if I had the resources that the Secret Service has that I would allow somebody to be able to at least access the area of the roof. Because if they did, we know that the problems are going to exist that people are going to make the attempt and right. so how does one a guy with a 12 to 14 foot ladder gingerly put that in that scenario without ever being seen for carrying a 12 to 14 foot ladder yeah number two how does a youngin of his age and of his look get a rifle to that point b how do you get it there we got to start from there because if you don't start from there, nothing else makes sense. But if you look at him, like you just said, so you said the looks. So he did look like just, you know, some goofy ass kid um, that was just walking around, probably had it in a backpack, maybe a collapsible stock. So it was smaller, right? So, but there was another video where people was like, yo, this motherfucker's on the roof. And he's got a gun. And he has a gun. Like, yo, like, they're talking, they're, they're, they're telling people this shit. So well, once again, this, I'll go as far to say how in all of the hell 
that from 147.5 feet away from where Trump is, how did my man have the opportunity to get on that roof if Secret Service was also on that roof or in that perimeter? That was 147 feet away. But well, the good thing here is now it's been so many days. Now facts are coming out. So we know for a fact that they knew three hours before that this guy existed. Right. But then we know that 10 minutes before he fired the first shot, they also knew he existed. So with all these many things that are now factual basis, there's no more argument of, of them not knowing and why we were, why we are able to talk about this today is beyond me because it should have been a non-factor. It should have been a fact that uh, a young white kid who had uh, ideologies to shoot Donald Trump was arrested 150 yards from his podium. That's what the story should have been because there's no way that again, what, what we know for a fact is he did not did not look like the Secret Service and he did not look like a goddamn police officer, a sniper going to the rooftop to take up a counter sniper position. That's what the, these are the facts that you know, right? And All right, so, so Steve, so so we got a, a viewer had a question. Well, she had a statement for you. She said, she said, I call bullshit uh, service out these days in advance, scoping out everything, knocking on people's doors, running background checks. This was a setup. Can't comment online. Don't have the channel. Sorry. So she, I think she's saying the same thing we're saying. Like to so read what she said one more time. She said, I call bullshit. Secret Service was out there three days prior in advance, mm -hmm. scoping out everything, mm -hmm. knocking on people's doors, mm -hmm. running background checks. Mm -hmm. So that's what we saying. Me, me, all of us are saying the same thing. Like this kid didn't look like Secret Service. He didn't look like anybody of any importance, but he had the access to this roof. 150 yards away, which we know as shooters, Steve being a, a certified firearm instructor, we know 150 yards with a long gun ain't shit. Right. It's so, so, shit. so, but but here's the thing. Okay, let's play a little devil devil's advocate here. <clears throat> this might be the Wolford talking, but it might be the Wolford talking. <laughs> here we go. And that, and that was Desiree, by the way. That question came from Desiree. Desiree. Yes, hey. that, that question okay, came from Desiree. so here's the thing, is that we've all been in a situation where we've planned and planned and planned, and we get there, and shit goes south all the time. And I think that this is a classic case of shit going south. The problem is, but that's the secret is that is, it's the Secret Service, the most pristine supposed to be protection division in the world and they're supposed to have all of the bells and whistles covered now from what i read they said that they were supposed to have a township officer who has a total of 12 full-time cops protect that building that that building there and they told the secret service that hey we don't have the manpower to cover that building so Secret it, Service should have covered that building. Then Secret Service should have absolutely covered that they building. But some way it flew, under, it flew under the radar. And then when you have people saying the key word there, and Steve, you know, this is what we call a clue in law enforcement. A when someone clue. says there's a guy on that roof over there with a gun, that should have drew some freaking immediate attention from the local cops immediate automatically attention. immediate attention. you know and what i'm saying so what what's your what, what, what is your what is your standpoint on that steve let me jump in real quick i don't even have to have a uh, opinion about it uh they just they interviewed the commissioner of the uh what is it uh i can't remember the city name in pennsylvania but he specifically said the only duty they gave us was traffic duty and some other small duties. He said, when my officers saw that man on the roof, they all came across the tactical radio channel that we were given. So they came across with the information and nothing was done. So, so they, they, had, they had, so the local police dropped the ball. Well, well, here's the thing. And no. here's my problem. Everybody is pointing the finger at everybody. Secret Service is pointing the finger at local police. 
Local police saying, oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't our, our assignment. Yeah, see, but you know, Secret Service, when they come in, they take over everything. It's theirs. That shit is theirs. That yeah, whole and county. They have, and city they have that jurisdictional power. Yeah, and yeah. so they can't point the figure at nobody. So those, I don't want to call them losers, but I'm going to say it on the show. Those fucking losers. Who are we talking about this losers? Secret Service. Okay. Yeah, I said what I said. No, I, I said what I, I said. I just want to say because for the sake of the show that. Wait, because watch this. I said what I fucking said. I'll say it again. Steve, Steve, real shit. When they was picking, <laughs> don't push me out the frame. I said what I said. You're losing. When they was picking Trump up, motherfucker was like, let me get my shoe. If I, if we talk about protective services, we would have had our hand on his neck, head down, getting him off that fucking stage. He would have never did no goddamn fist pumps if me and you was protecting him. Am now, I right or am I wrong? Well, let me just stop you because it's the second time I've heard that. But what I will tell you, walk, working with certain protectees like the president, they do not have to listen to you, although they should. So although they should, our duty well, our hands is on the back of his goddamn neck, telling him to keep your head down and let's get the fuck out of here. Uh, I don't agree that they did a, I, I don't that point, agree that did a bad job. That they did a bad job. Not, oh, not yeah, Steve, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Say they, it again. We can eat. Yeah, yeah, I said I don't agree that they did a bad job not pushing him out, but it's like you know, with Trump. A lot of times when you're working with the Secret Service, they know your um, your personality, your char- their characteristics, so they know how you're going to act and react. And I kind of feel like they knew that that's what he wanted to do. Right. Yes. They saw that he was fine, and they said Shooter was down. They knew that he wanted to, you know, like tell his people, I'm good, I'm okay. Now, was that a good idea? Absolutely not. No. This guy was supposed to be taken to that car, like you said, head down, a uh, hand on his belt and his feet off the ground down them got doing steps into that car it was one of yep. the slowest moments i've ever seen after a president has been shot for secret service because if you look if you go back to reagan i think it was reagan when he got shot at the limo if you see how fast they got that man in that limo and out of dodge yes. at the hospital, yes. there was no time in between there was no it way was time. And, and that's how it should be mm-hmm. period Cause I'm telling you, like when we handling somebody, like yo, I understand your power, and I understand, but you hired me to do a job. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do my job at the end of the day. Trump head should have been down. Fuck that shoe. Let me get my shoe. Fuck that shoe. We'll get the shoe later. Somebody else get that shoe. Remember is- get him in the car. Get him out of here. Cause we don't know if there's a second shooter. Mm-hmm. We know that the first shooter is down, but we don't know if there is a second shooter. So get him out of here. Fist pumping, man. Fuck that. Your people know you're alive. Get in the car. Let's go. You can talk to him later. I'm going to tell you now, I think, I want to interject here for a second. I thought it was just, I mean, I don't, I don't, I thought that was just badass when he fist pumped and kept saying, fight, 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 fight. Like, I just thought that was badass. Now, was, badass. was that was Unless that? There was another sniper right over here. Right, put right, a bullet in his head. Right, I understand. Then it's not badass. I, it's not know. badass. It's Get dumbass. your ass down. Right. Get the fuck right. out of here. I know, but I, I thought that I, speaking well, not speaking for Trump, but uh, the character of Trump was he wanted everybody to know he was all right, and he wanted everybody to know that even though this happened, fight, fight, fight. So let, let, me, uh, let me step in on something else. So that's what I, I really liked about that situation. Uh, Steve, I would love to get your commentary on uh, Armed and Dangerous in America. And I would love to get your commentary on uh, the realities of police powers. Uh, uh, Brandon, Malcolm said, I needed this. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Yes. Oh, 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 yeah. Malcolm, you know, yes. you, you, Malcolm, you know you the man. You, uh, you've seen this in action all the time, Malcolm. You yeah. know, you we, you know we got you. Yeah, absolutely. So, Steve, 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 Steve what, what I would like to get from you is what you say. Before we get into that, thanks for scanning the QR code. It helps our channel grow. Yes, thank you for scanning the QR code. For uh, it helps our channel grow. Please buy some merchandise on there. All that other good stuff, Steve. Now, getting back to you, 
Uh, I would like to get your commentary on Armed and Dangerous, um, the realities of policing and the powers. Uh, you've been a police officer for so long. Looking at the Ray Sharp Brooks situation and things like that, what is your take? What What is your, I'd like to know, what is your take on that? So Ray Sharp Brooks, uh, I was one of the first to come out and talk about it. And people hated my commentary on it because they wanted to believe that this poor black man got shot down in cold blood and that was that. But the reality was this poor black man made poor black decisions. <laughs> I mean, decisions, yes. Let's just be honest. He made a very bad decision to take on the officer's non lethal weapon, which we know for the guys who have been hit by this thing and withstood just seconds of something that can be life changing. That we yes. understand that this thing can stop us from doing anything in that moment, anything. which gives you the opportunity to do something. We don't know what that something may be. And unfortunately, he found out the hard way that you can't just turn around, point a taser at somebody and, and shoot at them. And a lot of people say, well, how did he know? First of all, when you hear it, just like you saw that Trump rally and you heard those, pat, 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 you knew it was something. You may yeah. not have known yeah. it was gunshots, but that pop sounds like something and so when that officer heard that 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 pop from that taser and he saw the smoke and the light come from that taser he knew it was go time he doesn't have the opportunity to sit there and say oh my god did he hit me oh my god did he shoot at me no he saw the thing pointed at him he heard the pop which he knows what it sounds like and that was that it was business time now i will say and it's the only thing i'll say bad for the officer is that the officer could have treated the scenario a little bit better in the beginning but he still did nothing illegal he just had bad policing practices i would say but right, was, Reece, uh, Reece, because i said like hey there's two officers there there was no reason why he should have got the upper hand on either one of them no i and disagree I with that, that. No, i disagree I said with that. that no and i, 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 I disagree with that, that. No, I stand on that. I stand on that because if there's two officers there, we have a. Does that mean that shit can't happen bad? Because shit, there's two but, officers but there? Shit did happen bad. Right. But there's two of us against one person. And, and, that, and could, that one person could move both of our asses. Clearly. But if, hey. but if it was two of us uh -huh. there, me and you, we've been in this same situation. And I've had to save your Here is my sergeant. And we had the same situation. And I had to save your ass. No, you did. We ended up taking that motherfucker to jail. The <laughs> guy with the gun? Yes. Yes. And you had no idea he had a gun. Motherfucker, I'm the one that found the gun. Right. After I let sweep the guy and got him in cuffs. So is this not the same shit? No, it's totally this different. This is the same shit. It, no, it's totally you can different. argue with me all hey, you want to. Hey, that's the race. Hold on, wait. Steve got something to say. Oh, okay, said, hold, on, hold on, Steve. Hold on, hold on. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said Desiree said he didn't even say ouch. She said the police officer didn't say out, so she calls BS. <laughs> yes, and she did. Because Desiree has not felt that taser. Oh, oh right. that, right. that, that right. taser was a bitch. Yeah, that taser was You put that taser on somebody. Listen, they cannot move. Listen, we 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 black officers and we saying this shit. I'm right. telling you now, that taser gets on your ass. You screwed. You're gonna be incapacitated for five seconds. You are done. And and and, and if it's like me, if, if these muscles tighten up, they ain't coming up tight for at least five, 10, 15 minutes. Because them fat cells. The, but the way my fat cells, <laughs> the way my fat cells is yeah. is, is, is is set up. The fat I'm cells. Screwed. It's like, hey, muscles, we can't help you. So we going over here. So Steve, uh, I want you to talk a little bit about the use of deadly force. And you've been watching the show, and you've heard ability, opportunity, ability, opportunity, and jeopardy. And I want you to give us a little bit of commentary from your years of experience as a law enforcement officer. Are we spot on? Is there something that you'd like to add to the conversation, or are we way off base? No, you guys had it. I mean, you explained it, man. I would just break down a little bit more layman terms, really, really quickly, right? So, ability, opportunity, and jeopardy is just something that. Is, is a thing that is used to state that I had these things so I know that my shoot or my self-defense was good, right? So the ability, they talked about ability. Ability means having the ability to actually harm you, right? 
lot of people only see that as guns, knife, and this and other. Person having the ability to harm you is not standing outside the car with the keys in their hand, yet standing being in the car with the car on, with the car ready to move, right? That's the ability to harm you. Opportunity. Yes. Do they have the opportunity to harm you? Are you nowhere to be able to move out the way of that car? Can they put that car in drive and it hurt you before you can move out the way? Can they pull that gun up before you can move and, and not be shot? Or do we know, do we have to know that the gun has bullets in it? Opportunity just means that that person has the opportunity to harm you with the thing that they had the ability to harm you with. So person with a, hand, a gun in their hand, we know that now they have the opportunity as long as they raise that gun up. Person with a knife, they talk about the 20 foot rule, 20 foot, 21 foot rule, right? A person with a knife being able to come at you within 21 feet for you to have a reaction time to have self-defense. We're not talking about just laying one bullet into a person and think that that's going to be the end to it. No, within 21 feet, it takes a person about two to three seconds to get up on you. That is not a, most people. When I train people for an, in firearms training is to be able to draw from the holster and put a shot, accurate shot on target within 1.5 seconds. If you can't do that, you're not going to stop somebody with a knife coming at you within 21 feet. It's just not going to happen. And even if you do, unfortunately, humans these days are like, I'm waiting on y'all. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. humans these days with the bodies and things that they got going on these days, don't even stop if you shot them five times in the upper thoracic cavity, which is up here in the good part, you know. So understanding all these things, understanding, you know, self-defense in, in a mental state is, is to understand that not only do I have to have the law behind me, but I also have to understand that even if I do have the law behind me, it's still going to be a hard track regardless like we're talking about something that is seemingly number one impossible to do anyway because humans can't just do what people think that we can do we can't just pull out a gun and shoot somebody even if it's in self-defense because it's a mental block there that's right. number one and number two can you live with it <laughs> is the second part to that so all these things you got to think about when you're talking about self-defense and talking about even with officers that's why you've seen like videos of officers put their guns down or video officers start crying when they shoot people because it's not just a normal human thing to do. So all these things have to come into play when you're thinking and talking about self-defense and, and you know, uh, what was it? Cause it's blocked on mine. I can't see the, uh, the name, the title. Oh, armed and, uh, armed and dangerous. Yeah. So, I mean, just, just think about those things. You know, and again, like I said, reality of a police power and police shooting and civilian power to actually shoot somebody. These things all have to be taken into one big, big thought process before you actually pull that gun out and do something to somebody. And then, of course, jeopardy, which was the last one. Did they put your life in jeopardy? Did right. what they were doing cause you to believe that if they committed the act, if they used the opportunity to commit the act, was I going to be jeopardized? For my life, my safety, or third parties' life and safety. And if that answer is yes, you'll probably be 100% good in court. If that answer is no, you're probably going to have some problems. Well, I'll tell you this here. Even if the answer is yes, you should be good, you're not always good. Because the segment before this one we had was called What Happens When Politics goes into policing and we've seen the ray sharp brooks thing and the officer still went to jail and he did everything right he had ability opportunity jeopardy he was everything. i mean the only thing he didn't do to this guy is reach around and give him a hand job and give, him a, and give him a hug so right and give him a hug and a kiss uh, we love him. uh uh he did everything right and he still ended up going to jail but that's what happens when politics and policing gets involved so i want to go ahead steve you will stay with us just for another few seconds yeah. i want to go ahead and go to the next slide a second because i really want to get Steve's uh, commentary on this one here. Okay, situational awareness, Steve. Uh, recognizing threat levels, assessing situations, factors influencing use of forces, and decisions and importance of de-escalation. Talk to mm. me about your, your years big. of service and your commentary on, on, on these here. Yes, I don't know if you gave him like a full spectrum of me. I, might, well, I didn't hear you say it, but uh, I've been doing this for 25 years. I've been public safety 25 years, 
And, you know, when it comes to situational awareness, it's like one of the biggest things I specialize in. And that's something I've been teaching my kids since they were like three and four today, where they could really understand about, you know, threats and, and recognizing things and situational awareness, hard corners, those things. So if we go down this line here, recognizing threat levels, how do I assess situations? What well, all depends on your environment. You know, a lot of times, you know, somebody who, let's use Atlanta for example, people that live in Atlanta may have a different scenario than people who live in um, Fayetteville or people who live in Sandy Springs or way north somewhere, right? So, or, or like uh, this, this big time up here lives somewhere on the moon somewhere, <laughs> right? So way, way away from crime, right? So our, our sense of situations are going to be, you know, slightly different, but it should never change based on scenarios. But you should understand that a lot of times criminals think in two different ways, right? So they come to Atlanta because they say easy target, right? But in the same token, they can go up to somewhere like a Marietta or a Sandy Springs and say, well, these guys are actually a lot easier because they're not paying as much attention to me as somebody in Atlanta. Whereas mm -hmm. most of the crime is happening in Atlanta because the lack of police response and the lack of just police in general yeah. knowing or being able to respond because they don't have the resources. Whereas in somebody in Sandy Springs may have police that can get called and be there in two minutes uh, for backup. But you don't want to just use that when we're thinking about using our, you know, situational awareness to assess things and to have these things plan to how we respond or how we do things. So things you should be thinking about in your situational awareness. One of the most important, and I always talk about this, is hard corners. People hide behind like corners that you can't see when you're just walking up on them, right? So we always using, but I thought you were going to say something. Yeah, but always use simple things like just looking left to right, just like crossing the street. Just use simple things. A lot, a lot of people want to make this difficult and hard about how I can defend myself or how I can protect myself through situational awareness. Situational awareness is just paying more attention. That's it. And the, the more right. I pay attention, the harder a target I am. Women, always have your keys in your hand when you go into your car. Don't walk straight to your car unless you feel like you're being chased. And if you feel like you're being chased, you definitely shouldn't be walking straight to your car, right? Because you won't have enough time to get in the bad boy and crank it up and go by the time somebody is on you. So always assess your scenario, meaning look left and right. Make sure there's no weird, strange things standing around you. I don't care if it's, it's a, another female. Females today are so grimy that they're helping the males by playing you to so the male. Yes. It's crazy. It, it's like the weirdest yeah. thing in the world. They're willing so, to go to jail. Willing to so go to jail. One of the things that um, when we're talking about the go to the next slide, please. When we're talking about the de-escalation uh, techniques in reducing the need for force, um, as far as a communication strategy and psychological approach and the uh, practical scenarios and the roles of policing, um, you know, I know it's something that is being raked over the coals a million times about what can we do as police officers to de-escalate situations and what can we do, whether it is non-lethal situations, injected non-lethal situations in to play or whatever. Um, but what is your take on the use of, and, and you know, once I get Steve on the line here, I love to use him because he mm -hmm. is, everybody pays him big money to come on their shows and we haven't paid you a dime and he always gets these these inquiries to go on the shows and stuff like that. And because we've been friends, uh, what almost twenty five years, he's he's graced me to come on the show or whatever. And uh, so I always use him and I always get the most out of him. I drain him mm -hmm. when 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 I get him on a thing. So as far as you're because you're talking to a professional here, this is no freaking amateur here. All right, when you're talking about this, I've trained this guy up to speed, to fight, okay? So this is one of my protégés here, all right? <laughs> okay, so when, you, boy, talk Steve when, shit. when you're talking about de-escalation techniques, give me your viewpoints on that. 
Uh, well, disc racing is one thing that I love because I actually teach this to um, senior citizen facilities uh, mm -hmm. now. So they call me just for the de-escalation. And the reason why they do that is because when they get new clientele, they don't want it to become a threat to their uh, communities if it's somebody that's bad. So one of the first things in, in de-escalation, like you talk about communi communication strategies, is how not to use trigger words. People respond... Yes through trigger words. And, you know, it, it, it's so unfortunate that people these days don't care about the things that come out of their mouth and not only the things that come out of their mouth, but how it makes somebody feel. And so when it comes to de-escalation and this overall perspective of keeping you from getting your butt kicked is learning how not to use these trigger words or say the wrong things to people or learning how to say it in a different manner. So like right. if we tell people about like when you're dealing with people with autism or people with uh, mental issues, you can't it's say delicious. no. Yes. No is a bad word. And one thing I learned yeah. like, with my ex-wife, like her mom had Huntington's disease. You couldn't tell them no because no is such a bad thing. You got to say, well, we just can't have that today, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we can't do that mm -hmm. right now. And it's the same thing with people that are mentally unstable. You need to learn how to talk to people and, and help them understand that saying no could be bad for you because or not just no but just other things that we can use as a, as a walk around so that we don't end up in a bad scenario you know and it, it comes down to that second one too the psychological approaches we're not doing it for us right because i don't want to make myself feel better but i want to keep myself safe right so yes. learning how to talk to somebody and learning how to respond to their because here's the thing like let me cut it myself off for a second most people don't know what autism looks like, right? So mm -hmm. you're talking to a person with autism and wouldn't even know it until they had a reaction or response to yes. it, right? I remember when, uh, I don't know, Triple, if you responded to this call, but we was in, in Jonesboro for the Clayton County Sheriff Department. We responded in front of a shoe store where this big old dude with autism store. was going crazy on officers. Well, but it was going so crazy happened on. that they started with him first got some type of reaction and mom didn't say anything until they were getting ready to tase this boy. And she screamed out, he's autistic, don't tase him. I'm like, well, why didn't you tell us that before? Or tell them, because I, I, I was late to the scene. But it's like, why didn't you tell us that before? Because yes. they couldn't yes. recognize it. And sometimes you can't, but sometimes that's like the whole thing of not going in on people and learning how to communicate properly so you can de-escalate situations and not end up in a situation where he was like a five-year-old. He didn't know what he did wrong, and he's ready to ride the lightning. Like, mm -hmm. We don't want this guy riding the lightning, exactly. and he don't even know what he did wrong. So, you know, it's it's, it's uh, right. and going to that last one: practical scenarios and role playing. I think police officers and civilians too that's on this on this uh, show right now should pay attention to learning how and just, just just thinking about what i'm saying and let me try to say it in a different ways so your brain can think that uh oh these are the words about to come out of my mouth let me see if i change this up what will happen how much of a, a and, and this goes great in relationships you know the escalation is great in relationships because it's like hey yes yeah. on every platform you're what? exactly right yeah because i tell Marriage you why she looks fat right she's gonna respond to that and instead of me just saying, well, I don't like the way that dress looks on you. That dress changes a whole fight right. for the night, for the rest of the week. Right? I don't have to fight for the rest of the week because I didn't call you fat. I just said, that doesn't look, I don't like that on you. Right? Even though I want to say, you can't never wear nothing like that. Right? You look but fat. You look fat. Daryl? Daryl? You look fat. Shut up. Let me... Okay. <laughs> I love that, son. Okay. So, so let me uh, say this here. Go to the next slide real quick. We're going to just touch a little bit on this slide here. It's the use of force, uh, lethal force, and the uh, tools and tactics and the types of less lethal force. We talked about this, the taser, acetone, pepper spray, uh, and the proper use and the handling of force. And case studies and the and the outcome of it. Go to the next slide here, real quick. Mm -hmm. and, and, and 
when and how to use use of force, the legal and ethical, which Steve talked about, the mental capacity of how it affects officers. Because nobody's wake up in the morning just saying, I think I just want to go out here and shoot somebody. I'm going to go shoot somebody. Today. Right. You know, no, no, no one says that. Yeah, I'm just kind of so so the, the legal and ethical considerations and the real life incidents and the analysts and the psychological impact on officers in the community that 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 that, that happens to. So that's very important also to keep in mm -hmm. consideration also, people. So believe me when I tell you, we're taking time for a reason to address these issues because I don't want to see another one of you have to endure what that officer in the Rayshaw Brooks situation endured and he did everything legally justified. Legally uh, whether yes. you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, no it doesn't one matter. doesn't what matter. What he did was right. He was justified. He was also victimized. And that's not right. Right. It's not right. And uh, another thing I want Steve to touch on very briefly here is that this is another thing that he teaches, reporting and accountability, the documentation and review, the reporting requirements, and the internal and external review process, accountability and transparency. And go to the next slide, please. Uh, let's see here. And yeah, that one there, reporting and accountability, documentation and review, reporting requirements, internal and external re review process, and accountability uh, when you're involved in a use of force situation and how that affects. So, Steve, mm -hmm. I would like to get your uh, input now, on that. Are we yeah, talking yes. as if we're talking to police officers or talking to a civilian? Well, okay. give us a quick about. So let's about. let's, let's yeah. start with on civilian side. What I want you to know is that all police officers get a 24-hour hold before they're required to make a statement on any type of life-changing uh, incident. When I say life changes, meaning you've killed somebody or shot somebody or something serious uh, happened, mm -hmm. you get 24 hours. Why? Because sometimes your brain can't remember everything that happened within that short period. So as civilians, I want you to understand, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. Say, I'm going to obtain a lawyer, right? Yeah. Or if you say anything, it's only to keep yourself out of jail for the night. He pulled a gun on me. I had to return fire to defend myself. That's all I can say right now. That's all I can say right now. And if you need to, there's video cameras everywhere in the world right now. Please go review the video camera so you can see that my story lines up until I'm able to talk to an attorney, right? Never make statements before a 24 hour period because your brain needs time to remember things. You're gonna say things that you wish you had not seen, seen I can't even talk, have said, and they're going to love you for it because they're going to use it against you. Do not do that. Ensure yes. that whatever you say, whatever statements you make, come 24 hours after, right? And here's the thing. Remember everything. Try to remember everything. Write notes as it comes back to you over that 24-hour period, that day later, two days later, three days later. And this is for both police and security and for a uh, civilian, right? Write notes as the, the thoughts come back to you so you can put together a whole story that makes sense and, and see if it, it jogs your memory once everything has come back to light. Now, they say internal, external review processes. That could be a lot of different things for a lot of different uh, departments. Because I've seen some departments not be as, as uh, What's the word I'm looking for? As effective as other departments, meaning that their, their investigation was so short yeah. and to the point that it was kind of questionable. And then I've seen some. You said what now? They missed some shit. They missed some they stuff, right? And I've seen shit. other departments that, I mean, will literally come back two weeks later and ask you the same 50 questions all over again. And, and they won't close that case or close that, that scenario until they've gotten a complete story uh, from every side, right? And I'm talking about pictures, statements, thoughts on it, everything, right? Yeah. And that, that just varies on the places that you go. So when we talk about accountability and transparency, again, as a civilian, make sure that you are making sure they are have the same accountability that they're going to hold you to. Why? Because I don't want them to say I did something that I didn't do because guess what? It matters in court. Because they may, this person that died may have a great person that comes in as a lawyer 
and gets with that prosecution team and tries to tear you apart for something that they started or they did. Look at, again, look at the Rayshard Brooks scenario, mm -hmm. right? They are hammering this dude after what he learned and what he felt from that taser. He knows that it was an incapacitating device, but you are hammering me like I just randomly shot some guy for absolutely no reason, right? Right, of course, yeah. No. So, so uh, in conclusion, go to the next slide, please. In conclusion, uh, the summary and the key takeaway points from this is, like I said, we have a trailblazer with us, Steve Turner, um, and I'll let him give you his Instagram handle and all this other stuff. Steve, if someone wants to get a hold of you, I'm going to give you a chance to, 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 to give them your information or whatever. But uh, in, in summary and conclusions, if you have any questions, type them in the, in the comment section here. We're happy to answer them. Uh, recap of the training. Remember, if you're involved in any type of use of force situation, ability, opportunity, and jeopardy, we broke down in it. detail. We broke down in detail, people. You can't get no better than what we just did. We just, we just gave you a law enforcement class just of what the cops team. are going to ask you. What they're going to be looking for. If the if the prosecuting attorney is looking to prosecute you, this is what they've got to be able to prove. We just gave it to you. Mm -hmm. We just gave it to you. So if you go out here and you do something different other than what we just said, that's on you. That is on you. We All right. You. We just Steve told you, listen, take 24 hours. Steve, my line of a dying. Take 24 hours to think about what you saw. Get all that shit because it does change. Uh, the importance of continual learning for officer is always uh, a pivotal point. And uh, uh, that's why we have, uh, it's like 24 hours a year that we have to go through training, stuff like that. You as civilians don't have that. But still, we just gave it to you folks. Uh, open and shut case right there. Yes. Oh, on, even on the Ray Sharp Brooks case, he got arrested. They they put up the man in jail, but he was able to beat those charges. He was yes. able to get his job back. Mm -hmm. He was able to be vindicated and made whole for it. So if you follow the law, it will always protect you yes. on this here. Yes. Um, and, and closing... What I would like to do, because we're now running up on an hour and 52 minutes, this was a good segment. And I don't mind it running over like this because this is so important. When we're talking about the use of deadly force and taking someone's life, it's so important that we bring on the professionals. It is so important. Use of force in the home with wife and husband or children. Is it such a thing? Yes. yes. If ability, about opportunity, yes. and jeopardy is there but wait absolutely wait, 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 let's see so see see so 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 malcolm had a question and the question was use of force in the home with wife or husband or children is it such a thing steve give us give us what your thoughts uh give us a five, five second, second thought okay, on that. So I'll, I'll just use the law right 16 323 defensive habitation right so what it says is that i can terminate some such others uh, unlawful entry into and based on their tumultuous in their tumultuous manner, right? If I have all them people in the house, I have cars in the driveway, and you bust into my home, I can think nothing mm -hmm. other than you are there to harm me, right? And like there of them said, just don't get involved yes. in where this guy starts to run out the front door and you start popping shots at him, right? Some again, I go back to that that whole thing where some yes. police departments thoroughly investigating, some don't. I've seen some police departments when people are shot at a person running out their door, do absolutely nothing. Then I've seen police departments arrest the homeowner for shooting at a person running out the front door. So always be careful. Follow the law because that's the only thing that's going to save you. And know that if you have those people in the home, you are more susceptible to say, I thought that they were there to harm us. Why? Because they knew we were home because our cars were in the driveway. So sometimes. And why else would you right. kick in my door? Yes. You kicked in my door to harm me. Listen, Steve, listen. I am so glad you came on. Listen, Steve is a fucking gem. Like, wealth of knowledge. This is not the last time he's going to be on this show. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, merch is at the bottom. 
we got to keep this show going. Like there's so much wisdom. There's so much experience out here that like we want to teach you. This is a form of community policing. Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. The last, what, 10 years, community policing has been a thing because we have to inform you guys. Like what we do on our end is what we do. But for us to be able to talk to the community, uh, teach you guys what we know, while we do what we do, that is a big thing. So this is like community policing. And if Gypstick is watching, like we should get <laughs> automatic community policing. We should get credit every year. We should get credit yes. right now yes. for this. This is, this is something right this here. Is, as a matter of fact, call us in the teacher class. Community policing, Daryl Triple, I gotta Jeff, do and Steve. Hey, 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 hold on, hold yes. on. We got to do it with our whooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. They probably going to say hell no to that. because so, so, Whooper and a stick. Right. And then we're, we're going to come go. and we will teach community Steve, policing. what I want to do, I want to give you the opportunity. If people want to get a hold of you, how do they get uh, a hold of you? So Instagram you is Steve? option underscore sniper. Uh, that's pretty much the only way that we can kind of communicate back and forth is through Instagram. It is a private page. So if you if you click follow, then uh, I'll know where it came from. Yeah, so option, option okay. underscore Yes, also, Steve, if you don't mind me saying, if you don't want me saying, like, you you fellas out there with, with, with no felonies, no bullshit on your record. Like Steve has multiple jobs, security jobs for folks who are in the security industry. If you're in the security industry, hit Steve up um, to get those jobs. Uh, That's correct. Steve, am I correct? I said that's correct. Steve, say again. That's correct. Hit Steve up on that Instagram. Hit him up. No felonies, no bullshit, no DUIs. None of that whole shit. It's work for Steve. Yeah. So, Steve, I want to say uh, thank you again for coming on. I know you're very busy, and I really appreciate you coming on and supporting the show or whatever. But uh, I want to say thank you very much for coming on, and we look to have you we look to have you on again. Thank you oh, so yeah, no much. Problem. for that. I'm glad we fixed the uh, technical difficulties that I, uh, I just found out you can't do it through mobile. You have to do it on a laptop. So I got it now. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So you can't do I couldn't log mobile? on through mobile. I had to do it through a laptop. All right. So oh. y'all heard, heard Steve. If you got your mobile. Well, for me. Sometimes it's a little physically on mobile, but you got your laptop, log in. We're here. Wealth of knowledge. The people we bring on here, I'm telling y'all, they're experts. Like, that's what we're doing. We want to inform y'all. We love y'all. Um, and let's let's keep it going. Episode five next week. Be prepared. Uh, Steve, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to go ahead and um, uh, see if you ever want to come back. And we'll definitely have you back again. Thank you so much, brother, for it. You got a wealth of experience here with Steve Turner. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, buddy. All right. Bye. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this uh, uh we ladies come and to gentlemen, another end this of is the, the Ask Remix. a Cop show where you got a chance to ask a cop anything. Uh, you had a chance to to call in, you had a chance to jump on the chat, you had a chance to learn one of the most crucial things that we do as cops is the use of deadly force in high stress situations. We explained it, we broke it down to you from Georgia law right there, people. So there is no excuse um, for you guys to go out here and to, and to make those stupid mistakes and the stereotypes that we have as regular citizens thinking that we could do something when we really can't. We really can't. There's no excuse for you to be cornered by cops and then you'd be scared to talk to them or not talk to them respectfully, sir. I like to wait on my attorney. Here's what happened. He pulled a gun. I fired, blah, blah, blah. He kicked in my door. Uh, I was scared to death. I thought he was going to kill us. I fired, blah, 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 blah. Those quick statements there can be life changing, people. Yes. All right. It could be yes. life changing. And you not knowing what to say or do is, I can't believe this. At the end of the show, we got a call. Hold on a second. Yeah.
Uh, ask a cop. You're on with Daryl and Jeff. Go right ahead. You're on with Daryl and Jeff. Go right ahead, sir. Cut your radio down. Hello? Hi. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. That this is Daryl and Jeff. Thank you so much. Oh, this is my mom. <laughs> mom, I didn't even recognize you. Mom, you got to speak up. We got to go. We got two seconds, Mama. We love you. Yeah, thank you, Mom, for calling in. You you listen to the whole show? You learned something? That wasn't the message, Mama. What'd she say? She said she don't know how to kill people. No oh! <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Mom, we don't, we don't want you to learn how to kill people. We want you to learn how to defend yourself. Is what it is. That's the wrong thing to tell the police if someone breaks in your house. Yeah, I my son me. taught me. My son uh, taught me no, how to oh, kill no someone. Way. I'm attached to yeah, this. we so gotta Mama, learn how to defend. Yes. So, Mama, we love you. We love you. All right. So, so I love you too. All right. Bye bye. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I want to thank once again. Our, next week. Uh, uh, yeah, one more thing. I want to thank ah, again. I want to thank again the sponsors to our show, Tom and Pools. Oh, because man, without ooh. this, it would not be possible. It would not be possible. But you're another sponsor, and we do have to fix it because they came through tonight when we were talking. Hmm? G11 Security. Yes. G11 Absolutely. came through tonight on this show. Amazing sponsor. We love y'all. Not only, listen, do we love y'all, all the police watching, G11, we have contracts around the world, they said. So let's talk about it. Let's be about it. They said they'll send their shit next week. Yes. We'll have them on here. But for tonight, Tom and Pools, 770-478-2257, TomandPools.com. What, what is this? At Reach the end, out to end of the show, everybody wants to call. What is this here? Yeah, but we Hold can't. on one second. Hold what on. We got to take every call. We got to take every uh, Daryl and Jeff, ask a cop. Matt, Matt, help you. <laughs> oh, okay. Mom said I had to correct this shit. I got you, Mom. We know you don't want to kill nobody. Oh, that's right. Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. All right. I love you. Bye bye. Okay. Next Thursday, 8 p.m., we'll be back here with another hot topic. If there's any topic you guys want to talk about, put it in the comments, email us, put it on the website. We'll talk about it next week. I'm Jeff. I'm Daryl. And we are out. Love Thank you, you so much. Peace.